Yeah. Now we're also going to talk about um, Shane Gillis got fired. And here's the thing. I think that's like the things he, he said say? were not what, funny. What did he do? I've got the links here. Damn, Chinatown's fucking nuts. It's crazy, dude. It is full fucking China. Dude, it's yeah. a fucking Chinese down there. I wonder how that started. They just built one fucked up looking building and people were like, well, all right, no one said anything. Let Let's the fucking ch- live there, huh? <laughs> If he did what he did, Mike Fellows had a good point. Is he said that like if he did what he did and said the N word, no one would be defending him this hard. But he said a racial slur for Asians, and people are like, eh. Uh, I think it's like they're a corporation. It's a corporate job. Comedians everywhere know that if you want to get corporate gigs, you gotta be kind of clean. Both like in your act and well, in your did he image. Just, he did an impression of an Asian person. He did an impression of an Asian person. They were talking about Chinatown, and he said, "Put the funky fucking here." Oh, okay. So he said yeah. that word. He's yeah, but not in <clears throat> not in a defensible context. It wasn't trying to make it wasn't a point. In character. No, he wasn't like he was doing just a sketch. Saying, like, Exactly. He was, saying, he was just like riffing off the cuff. They were talking about how Chinatown was silly. He was and saying mocking. Chinese immigrants are less than. Kind of implying that. He was just jocular, being shocking just by saying a slur, a slur for no reason. Uh, and he also did a, a bunch it does, of... I mean, it does suck that you have to kind of be like... Like I said, the R word on this episode. Yeah, but then you immediately caught it and were like, oh, at least I'm trying to work on that. Fair enough. You know? He didn't. He didn't do that, A. Uh, They were just saying some pretty... The other guy was saying some pretty racist shit, and he was just kind of nodding along and waiting for his time to riff. Uh, And then they also launched into a bunch of real, like, old, like, 1950s Chinese waiter jokes. (laughs) But we had... And the translation between you and the waiter... Yeah. It's just such a fucking hassle. It's like, can you... I'm pointing at it. <laughs> like, this is the fucking yeah. neuter. Well, that's why I put number for like 57. Yeah, this one, even with the fucking shit. I was yeah. pointing. I was like, that sauce. <laughs> that. And she's like, yes. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that one. She's like, yeah. She's like, a mi- medium or a spicy? Yeah. It's like, uh, medium. She's like, spicy. <laughs> like, no, medium. <laughs> No medium, spicy. <laughs> like I have a comedy album on vinyl that I took from my dad's old collection. It's a 1955 comedy album called Life of the Party. And there is a track on it, or La- Laugh of the Party. And one of the sketch- sketches on it is a Buddy Hackett sketch called The Chinese Waiter. Hey, what up guys? It's me, Brendan. I'm here uh, with my record player and I've got the album Life of the Party, or Laugh of the Party, from 1955. As you can see, it's marketed to 50s housewives. That's the level of comedy we're dealing with here. Really, really avant-garde material. Um, And just to prove a point, there's the track listing on the back. And if you'll notice, it says, The Chinese Waiter. Chinese Waiter. All right. I'm going to play this. And uh, you guys probably see that I'm balding. Uh, probably a bad idea to put the camera above my head. Anyway, I'm going to play this. And uh, <laughs> you're going to, just a content warning here. It's a comedy sketch from 1955 called The Chinese Waiter. Uh, it's racist as fuck. Uh, there's no way around this. I apologize for the sound quality. All my sound equipment is over in the space station. I'm just using my camera mic. And I don't think I've ever cleaned this record before. But let's take a listen, shall we? How you do? What you have, uh, six people? Yeah, you want to have the family dinner. Very good, the family dinner, you have a choice of soup. Can you get a spare lip or egg low? Then you have three main dishes, two from column A, one from column B, and tea, a rice, and dessert. You want it? All right, sit down. Come inside first. 
Now, uh, what do you want to start off with the soup? We have the wonton soup, a chicken egg drop, and tomato soup with rice. What kind of soup you want? You want a wonton? That's a one wonton, one egg drop, one more egg drop, two egg drop, one wonton. Egg. What's that? <laughs> no, we don't have a split pea soup. We have a wonton, a chicken egg drop. So, no, we don't have a split pea. No, we didn't have it yesterday, and we don't have it tomorrow. We never have it. No, we look, your brother is a liar. We don't have it. That was an honor. Even we have it, we don't have it. A stupid idiot. No, what do you want now? Start over again. One wonton, one egg drop, one more egg drop. It's two egg drop and one wonton, right? No, uh, punch lines. Will oh. you shut up? You're on another table. What do you miss me up? Keep asking me questions. Keep yelling out. Just sit still and shut up. No, you mix me. I think you get the idea. Like, this is just old 50s Borscht Belt, like, material that they're doing of just Chinese accent jokes. And I'm sorry. Yeah, it's like, it's like... Road, road hack shit. You don't and get the just... top paying job in the whole field of comedy that's a steady gig doing jokes like that. Like, I'm sorry. Like, and he was already a pro at this point? Or? Yeah, he's been on Comedy Central. This is a podcast. It's not his stand-up act. He's not bad at stand-up. I've seen clips of his stand-up. It's not like anything amazing, but he's not terrible. I'm sure he's uh, great. He got a fucking yeah, he got look. Yeah, he's not... The, like he's, he's got gotta timing. be super talented if he was gonna be on the cast of but SNL. I know he's how fucking it up on these it. podcasts though. There's another one where it's him. So on this the was Legion after of he had Comedy Central credits. He did this. Yeah. Okay, then it was on purpose. And it was so like ten it's months not like ago. He's some rook that fucking didn't know what he was. It was doing. like, and it's not like the. Here's the thing: if they, I did comedy and I've said some offensive stuff on stage, but you grow, uh, you realize where the boundaries are. And if they had unearthed something like an old tape of... Are we on camera right now? uh, Are we? Are we recording? I don't know. I don't see the monitor. It's on. Uh, Oh, maybe? Okay. What up? No. So if they had unearthed like an old tape of like him six months into open micing and were trying to use that to smear him, that would be bullshit in my opinion. But this is 10 months ago. This was 2018. Like... Yeah, they didn't have to dig that deep. You're, yeah. a, you're a bobo head. It's not like, oh, well. or it's not like some old sketch from 1982 when he's this old guy and comedy tastes have <laughs> genuinely changed in that time. Uh, like, yeah, you ain't gonna catch. He wasn't like, like that punching against ever. like conventional <laughs> opinion. At least Chappelle is trying to have a point, even if I don't always agree with it. I understand he's forming real thoughts. He's not just being shocking to be shocking. He's not just uh, doing low-hanging racial humor. Yeah, although there's one bit. This is really interesting. There's one bit he did. The the alphabet people bit is on the Chappelle special. Yeah, is one? really is really similar to a bit Owen Benjamin used to do, where he broke them down and called them, you know, the L's, the B's, the T's, uh, and like humorously riffed on the differences between the two. And some of the tags are the same. Interesting. Yeah. He did a joke on his last... Owen Benjamin's day. a piece of shit. I'm not endorsing Owen Benjamin Chappelle or saying he's funny. had a tag on his last special that I... That was one... That's one of my tags. Yeah. That, I did, that uh, when I get great views, my penis will look distinguished. Yeah, that's... I feel that's an old joke. It might be. Yeah, I think that's a joke that's Greg been around. Cotter gave me that tag. Yeah, it's a good tag. Or maybe he gave me the Sean Connery tag. <laughs> but I don't know, I... I wrote that joke, I'm pretty sure. But it's low-hanging fruit. Yeah. Like, if you're in the gray pubes department, I could you could see writing that joke. I mean, you're, com- comedians aren't always above that shit. Sometimes the low-hanging fruit is there for a reason, you know? Yeah, then the rest of our bits are very different. It's yeah. like, if your character's... If your character's um, I could, it could totally be parallel thinking. I'm not saying that he stole the joke, but it's just interesting that he and Owen Benjamin... Have the same joke about LGBT people. They have two t- matching tags and one bit. Yeah, and it's kind of a similar premise. It's again, Dave Chappelle's bit. He does it where it's like the L, the LGBT, <laughs> and he calls them all L's, B's, T's, and G's, and then they're like all in a car. And basically, the point of the joke is trans people kind of need to shut up because they're annoying and they're holding gay people back. When did uh, Owen Benjamin do this? Owen joke? Benjamin did this bit. I don't know. Maybe. Five years ago, ten. Years, I don't know. On television. Yeah, I was. Yeah, As not Owen on Benjamin TV. Said he's got anything a, about this? Yeah, that's how I found this out because Owen Benjamin 
put out a video making fun of Ben Shapiro where he basically just put on a Jew mask and did a racist Jew impression because Owen Benjamin's like actually a Nazi now um, and believes like Hitler literally genuinely believes Hitler did nothing wrong and wants the Holocaust to happen again. Uh, and he, he was doing some real oh. racist Jew shit. And so then he, I Googled so his he, name. So he also might need to catch a hot loogie. If, if Possibly, if yeah. And then I, I was Googling his name and the most recent video he posted on YouTube is him being like, this is my joke. This is Chappelle's joke. <laughs> and I watched it. Uh, but Chappelle, I mean, that's, wow. Yeah. I'm surprised that's not getting, having more discussion in the comedy uh, community. Owen Benjamin's a piece of shit in the comedy and nobody community. Wants to question, like, nobody wants to question Chappelle. No one wants to question Chappelle and also nobody in the but comedy community Chappelle, wants to act like they've gone and watched an Owen Benjamin video lately. Chappelle had to have write, written just written a similar bit. It's totally possible that it's parallel thinking. I mean, the, the premise is right there if you're thinking along those lines and you kind of, you know, like. I'm are, just saying, like, I don't, I don't see why Dave would open his throat up to, to hackery <laughs> allegations when he really doesn't need to. He's yeah. So, he's so far ahead of the game. Like I said, it's very possibly, it could be parallel thinking. I'm not accusing him of anything. But it's interesting that this actual Nazi and Dave Chappelle came up with the same premise <laughs> about gay people. <laughs> yeah, man. It's like those, those flow charts where the circles overlap. Yeah. It's like Dave Chappelle, Owen Benjamin. What's that float with the two circles and they overlap one circle? The Venn diagram. Venn diagram. <laughs> yeah. Chappelle, a Chappelle, Owen Benjamin Venn diagram. <laughs> Yeah. Zach learns what ben, but the, the name of this video is just gonna be Zach learns what Venn diagrams are. No man, it's a, I don't I'm not learning what they are. I, I obviously knew what it was. I just couldn't think of a name. Go I fuck know. yourself. I'm just fucking with you. I but couldn't yeah, think of John, is, I couldn't think of John Cusack's name. I know. So the point is, ago. I Shane Gillis. A amount of pot, bro. Shane Gillis at best pot right is now. a hack, and you don't get to be on SNL if you're a hack. And at worst. He's racist, and sorry, we shouldn't just like sorry. That shit was ten months ago. Uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm not I'm not upset about all that because they were trying to compare him to like John Belushi and shit. No, because yeah, because and saying that SNL is a hypocrite because it was built on like people white or, or people of other ethnicities making fun of people of other ethnicities. That was a, it's a different time. Like you can make the different time argument then and be like, well, fuck, we know better now. But in 75, oops, like. No, no doubt. <clears throat> also, he's um, dead. You get mad at a dead dude who's been dead for almost 40 years? I mean, nobody got, <laughs> ever got mad at Steve Martin for saying the N-word in The Jerk. I'm sure if millennials saw that movie, they might. Do you think they would? They might. They might. They wouldn't understand the context of that bit? I've been watching that movie since I was 12, so it doesn't, you know. He was raised a poor black child. I know. Child. I've also listened to his stand-up. He does that bit He's on stage, too. It's ridiculous. It's hilarious. That's the point. I know. He is black. <laughs> He's just Steve Martin playing a black man. No, he's that, playing a white guy who's been raised by a black family. Right. But it's uh, like the rhythm bit, dude, when he finds his rhythm. Oh, Listening to Mazzalvani. <laughs> oh my god like that's that's so outdated but it like, is i don't find that racist and it's because we're raised with it i think i think if a, a person who was like 19 and i mean there lefty, was definitely like some stereotype jokes yes. in there yeah but like but they but 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 not really there are also some groundbreaking Characters. See, in that's there. the thing. The Lindsay, father invested all. The, I'm gonna direct. The black country brother invested all his money and came to save him. I'm going to arrest. I'm going to direct people to a video by Lindsay Ellis, who's much better at this than we are. Uh, she has a whole video about like the ethics of satire, because a lot of people will point to things like Blazing Saddles and be like, "You couldn't make that today," because it's just so fucking edgy, right? Mm -hmm. And she breaks down why, like. Mel Brooks' satire always had like a clear target. It was always, there was, he always had something to say. Sure, maybe he might have crossed some lines and had some blind spots, especially with jokes about gay people. But, you know, by and large, like all the racial stuff in um, 
Blazing Saddles, like clearly is making fun of racist people. And there's no other possible way you can interpret it differently. It was part, co-written by Richard Pryor, uh, which yeah, I know right? is kind of like I have a black writer, but it's Richard fucking Pryor. Um, and then the same Richard Pryor who said, fuck you to network money <laughs> multiple times to keep yeah. his soul. So, you know, he wasn't no yes man. So the, the for point is with the Mel jerk, Brooks. he does a little bit better of a job of making sure that there's a target of his jokes and it's making fun of like racism and stereotypes and maybe having a little bit more base level fun with it than Mel Brooks does. It might be a little less cerebral, but also Steve Martin was a philosophy major. He knew what he was doing with his silliness. This is a guy just riffing and just saying shocking racist shit because he knows it'll, you know, catch a specific audience and, you know, be trans like transgressive in the most basic form of the gun breaking a rule. <laughs> you know, that's it. That's all it was. And it's disappointing because his stand up is not half bad. And he's also yeah, but stand up isn't SNL. No, nope. SNL isn't a bunch of stand ups. SNL is a bunch of groundlings. So I've watched his sketches or sketches that he's appeared in, and yeah. they're funny, but they also seem to all have a common theme of playfully reminding you that not all Trump supporters are racists, and also that like, hey, there's some Jewish tr Trump supporters, and then also makes Nazis look silly, which I'm all for making Nazis look silly, but in the other context, it also makes it seem like they're not threatening. Uh, yeah. You know, and I know it's jokes, and they're funny sketches, but jokes like, have they're points. The new, not, they're the new Nazis. A Nazi, you, your neighbor might be a Nazi. Yeah. And Nazis it's, are okay. Like, We're, again, Nazis I'm not a prude. Are, Nazis are people too. I'm, I'm not a prude. Nazi lives matter. <laughs> well, it ends with, you know, the guy's like, I heard you listen to Drake. I don't listen to Drake. Yeah, but he's, cause he's half Jewish and, and, and half black. I don't listen to Drake. And then he's by himself. He's like, Drake. <laughs> it's kind of funny, I don't know. you know. Honestly, I don't even know what we're talking about. Either way, I'm you so don't crazy. just get a job on SNL. Also, earlier this year, President Trump didn't like a movie that was going to come out called The Hunt because it was marketed as like the premise is most dangerous game where it's rich people hunting humans, and but it's rich elites hunting deplorables uh, is the, like the tagline of how they marketed it. And he got mad. Tweeted. Like MAGA, rich MAGA people hunting deplorables? No, like rich, like liberals. Hunting deplorables, poor, like, white people. Uh, and, of course, it's a satire. It's a horror comedy. So it probably had... You oh, know, you mean, like, rednecks and Nazis. I don't understand why the premise is that hard to understand. Rich elites, triple parentheses elites, maybe, if you're inclined to that. Hunt the Trump base? Yeah, it's like they, they've imported... It's like Battle Royale. They've imported a bunch of deplorables is how they market it to an island, and then they're hunting them on the island. Do you not know the book Most Dangerous Game? I remember that movie with Ice T where they hunted Ice T. Okay, so Most Dangerous Game is a book about rich people hunting human beings because it's yeah, the yeah, last yeah. thrill left to them. Um, it's the, the most dangerous game because human beings can fight back on your mental level. Yeah. Um, so it's basically that, but it's rich elites versus deplorables. Trump got mad tweeted that he was mad about it and like this, they shouldn't allow this movie, blah, 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 blah. And it was also around the time of all those mass shootings that were happening this summer. And uh, the studio pulled it from theaters because the president got mad at a movie, which I think is a much greater freedom of speech issue than this dude losing out on yeah. SNL. So, it'll, so, so they'll release it in 2021 and make twice as much money. Yeah. So maybe but the they fact that he's trying to censor yeah, is, uh, is a bit troubling. But. Is way worse, I think, than people saying, I didn't like Dave Chappelle's special, and I think the points he made were shitty. That's the most he got. No one's been demanding that Netflix pull his special, you know? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Um, I think that's my thoughts on that. That's what's up. Hey! Uh, thank you guys for watching that video. I uh, hope you liked it. If you did, click subscribe, uh, click the bell, um, all that jazz. Tell your friends about this. We're trying to, yeah, run a YouTube channel. That's the whole game. All right. Uh, <laughs> see you guys later.